Have you guys ever wondered why we know so little about some of the animals that we see every day? I've been interacting with spiders my entire life, as I'm sure most human beings have, but it wasn't until a few years ago that I really started taking a closer look at their biology and their life cycles and the tools they have at their disposal that make them one of the most common, widespread, and successful animals in the world. So I figured, why not make a resource where people can learn a little bit more about what makes these animals so fascinating? What exactly makes an animal a spider? And how that animal stands out from the rest of the animal kingdom? So, if you'll offer me a little bit of your time today, I'd like to go over exactly that bit of information so that we can all be a little bit more knowledgeable about these fascinating animals. And I think the best place to start is this list that I've created about all the things that make spiders spiders. Spiders are invertebrates, they have no bones. Narrowing it down a little bit, spiders are arthropods, which means they have jointed appendages and exoskeletons. They are arachnids, getting more specific than that, which means they are not insects. Spiders have eight legs, as arachnids do. They have chelicerae as their mouth parts. These are colloquially referred to as fangs, spider fangs, but the technical term is chelicerae. Spiders are going to be carnivorous and venomous and have the ability to spin silk. They're going to have two main body parts, not counting appendages, and they'll have between six to eight eyes. They will also be full of these hairs all over their bodies, tiny little hairs that are sensory organs, and they're called seti. Before we move on, I do have under some parentheticals here that some of these are true of 99.9% .9 of spiders because there are exceptions to some of these things, but we won't get into that in this video. Stay tuned for others if you are curious about those exceptions. Let's explain the taxonomy a little bit. Invertebrates were the very first animals on the planet here in the animal kingdom. Invertebrate is a Latin word that means no backbone, so all of these animals don't have any bones like mammals, birds, and reptiles do today. Instead, uh, invertebrates solve this problem in a couple different ways, and the faction that these spiders belong to is the phylum arthropoda. They are arthropods, like their cousins the insects and the crustaceans, and that means they have exoskeletons. They are uh, skeletons on the outside, right? They're made of chitin, not bone, and they also don't grow with the animal, like our bones do. Uh, an exoskeleton is more like a suit of armor, so if an animal ever wants to get bigger, it has to break out of its own skin and crawl right out. The new exoskeleton will be underneath and will soon harden up, and that is the one time that an arthropod is able to grow. For what it's worth, all arthropods also have jointed appendages. Now here is a spider picture that I took straight off of Wikipedia, and it is going to serve as our model for today. We're going to learn about all of the body parts of a spider, starting with the two main body parts that hold the organs. Spider bodies are made up of two main sections, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. This is one of the reasons they are different from insects, is that insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen, but for arachnids, the head and thorax are fused. That's what we're referring to as the cephalothorax. Now the cephalothorax holds the mouth parts, the eyes, and actually all of the legs will be attached to the cephalothorax. The part in the back, the abdomen, or opisthosoma, uh, has a lot of other important organs like the heart, the book lungs, uh, the stomach, and the silk glands. Spiders all have eight legs, like basically all arachnids. They'll have four on one side and four on the other side. All spiders are going to have eight legs at all times in their lives, unless they have tragically lost a few in an accident. You may notice that this animal looks like it has two miniature legs that are front-facing near its face, and those aren't actually legs. They are pedipalps. All arachnids have pedipalps. This is something that's missing in insects. They are front-facing appendages, so they're going to be uh, closer to their face than every other leg, and they're used for sensing their surroundings. They're used for feeding if they need to grab onto their prey with 
extra limbs, and they're used for communication, usually between males and females. There'll be a lot of tapping going on with the pedipalps, sometimes delivering sperm, sometimes uh, helping uh, the animals connect with each other to get in a better position to hand off those sperm sacs. Uh, this image shows a different arachnid at the bottom right, a scorpion. Now, you can see the pedipalps in the top left on this spider, right around the fangs, right? But the scorpion fellow has claws, and those claws aren't legs. Those are their own pedipalps. So all arachnids have these things, but they chose to do different things with them, which is one of the things that I love most about arachnids, is that they all have the same number of body parts to work with, but they all adapted to use them differently. So if you count the scorpion's legs, the ones that aren't claws, you can see that it has four on each side. That's what tells you, oh, it's an arachnid, they have eight legs, so those claws must not be their legs, they must be their pedipalps. Pretty cool. So, farther to the front than the pedipalps are going to be the spider's fangs. These are called chelicerae, and just like pedipalps, every arachnid has chelicerae. They were some of the most early evolved mouth parts, they predate even teeth, and they're used for feeding and defense, and in spiders, they are connected to their venom glands. So, when a spider delivers venom to its prey or aggressor, it is doing it through a bite. It's through its fangs, its chelicerae, right? And this is what they look like close up. They're very pointy at the ends, and that's they're used for feeding, primarily. They really want to puncture the skin of whatever they're going to eat, and there are little holes on these fangs that inject venom into their prey. That's going to be the case for basically every spider. Here I have a nice little arrow showing where on the spider the eyes are located, because you might not be able to see them. They're so small. They're at the top of the cephalothorax, usually behind the fangs or chelicerae. And most spider eyes... Spiders don't have compound eyes like insects, right? Uh, they have simple eyes, and usually their vision is not very good. There are some ex exceptions. Here we have two pictures. One on the left has very small eyes, and its vision is not amazing, like most spiders. The one on the right, you may notice some of its eyes are way bigger. Now, they're still simple eyes, but this is a type of spider called a wolf spider. The family Lycosidae, where the wolf spiders are found, is one of the largest and most successful spider families. And these spiders are ground hunters. They go out and prowl, look for food, and then rush it down and eat it. So because you are a predator that goes out and looks for things, you need really good eyesight. For the spiders who don't have great eyesight, most of them are ambush hunters. They sit and wait for their prey to stumble across them. So in the back part of the opisthosoma or abdomen are the spider's spinnerets. All spiders have the ability to spin silk, but a lot of different spiders choose to use that silk in completely different ways. This image that we've been using as our model for a spider is a really big type of spider. It's called a tarantula. In fact, I believe this is a goliath bird eater among the biggest spiders in the world. And these spiders, they don't spin webs like we see traditional cobweb spiders, orb weaver spiders, cellar spiders do. They rather put their silk around the ground and in the tunnels that may, they might make when they burrow. And this silk is going to add an extra level of sensory um, abilities to the spider. Basically, if its entire territory is filled with some spider silk, then anything that walks nearby the, near the spider is going to trigger the silk like a tripwire, and cause it to vibrate, so the spider knows that something is around its territory, that it marked with its silk. It's pretty cool. And of course, here is a orb weaver spider that is using the silk in a very different way, hanging from it, creating a web, catching something that's flying, and then spinning it around in circles while it's applying all of this silk to its poor entangled prey. This is a cool map that shows basically where spiders are found around the world, and it's it's everywhere. Really, the only, the only places you aren't going to find spiders are where it, the conditions are way, way too cold the entire year round, or there is active volcanic activity. And that's basically it. Spiders are one of the most widespread groups of animals in the world today. 
And the reason is because they're so good at preying on what is probably the most widespread animal in the world today, which is the insect. Insects are everywhere. I don't think people appreciate truly how much of our world is filled with these guys. Look at this chart right here, showing that 75% of all world species are basically a species of insect. These guys were some of the last arthropods to evolve on this planet, but they were the only ones that grew wings and they were able to diversify so incredibly well and have basically taken over the world. But because of that, any animal that is specialized to prey on different types of insects has a lot going for it because its food source is just so plentiful. And that's why spiders are basically everywhere. Now, before we finish up today, I wanted to have a section about some animals that you might think are spiders, but actually aren't. Three, in fact, three other arachnids that people very commonly confuse for spiders. This is an amblypigid from the order Amblypygi. It is also an arachnid. These guys are called whip spiders, sometimes called tailless whip scorpions, sometimes amblypigids after the, the name of the order. One of the ways you can tell it's not a spider is because of these really long whip-like structures. That is what we call them colloquially. They are sensory organs, but count the legs on this friend for a second. You might notice it only has three legs, despite being an arachnid. Well, these whips are also legs. They have simply been modified to help the animal see better. And I use see, uh, the word see, not in a traditional sense because they're not true eyes. They're not seeing visually. They're picking up smells and vibrations because they have, they're lined with hairs that are very, very sensitive. Finally, we have the pedipalps of this animal, which don't look anything like spider pedipalps, which, if you guys remember, look just like regular legs, but a lot smaller, maybe a little bit bulbous at the end. Uh, these guys practically have arms, but they're lined with spikes. And that's because tailless whip scorpions are not venomous and they have no silk, but they are very strong. So they need to reach out at their prey that they sense with their little whips, their antennae formed legs, and then they lunge out and grab them with these spiked arms and bring them closer to their mouth parts, their chelicerae, which actually do look a lot like spider chelicerae, but they're not hollow because these animals are not venomous, so they're not connected to venom glands. All right, here we have these guys, these creepy looking fellows. These are solifugs or solifugids from the order of They are commonly called sun spiders, sometimes camel spiders, and sometimes even wind scorpions, but they are a different type of arachnid than spiders and scorpions. One of the ways you can tell is their pedipalps. Yeah, they look like legs, but they're really big. On spiders, you'll basically never find pedipalps, excuse me, that are larger than regular legs. And that is often the case with these guys. But the more telling way to tell these guys apart is their chelicerae, which look nothing like spider fangs. Uh, these guys chose to adapt their chelicerae to be almost like saws. They are serrated on both edges, and the bottom part and top part move independently of each other to, to really make sure that they cut through whatever they're biting into smaller sizes to digest. Oh, sorry, these animals are not venomous and they do not spin silk. And finally, we have the harvest men from the order Opiliones. These guys are the most commonly confused animal with spiders. They are commonly called harvest men and daddy long legs or daddy long leg spiders, even though they're not spiders. So uh, this is the big giveaway for these guys is you remember spiders have two main body parts, right? The cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now that is technically true of harvest men. However, in almost every single case, the cephalothorax and abdomen are fused into what looks like one single body part. It almost looks like a dot with a bunch of little long spindly legs coming out of it, right? It also has long spindly legs, but that is true of some spiders as well. So that is not really as good of a dead giveaway that you're not looking at a spider. I would look at, does it have two distinct body parts or does it have what looks like just one? Also, these guys are not venomous, contrary to popular belief, and they do not spin silk, which means if you find a animal that looks similar to this and it's in a web, it's probably not a harvestman, it is probably a spider, most likely a cellar spider, because they also have long spindly legs. 
Alrighty, guys. If you made it through, thank you so much for listening to what I had to say. I hope that everyone was able to learn at least one new thing about spiders, what they're classified as, uh, what their bodies look like, what they're able to do. I really am trying to grow this channel into one of the best sources on the internet for reputable spider knowledge. So if you guys have anything that you might like to hear, I'm open to suggestions about future videos. But otherwise, stay tuned because there is more spider-related content coming your way. Thanks again for listening. Catch you next time.